Disruptors actually have a tendency to suffer from idealism. And I am the first to say that I often see the world as it can be, but not always as it is. This often presents as miscalculating the gap between the present as it is and the future that they can easily envision. This is Innovation Currency. My name is Leanne Buchanan and I am your host. What I want this podcast to help people see about themselves is that innovation is for everyone and everyone is an innovator. I developed a simple test, a quiz, if you will, to help anyone discover their hidden innovation traits from across four specific domains, disruptor, connector, distributor, and influencer. If you haven't already taken the quiz, please stop, take a pause, and go by visiting my website, www.leannebuchanan.com backslash innovator quiz. Welcome to Innovation Currency. My name is Leanne Buchanan. We're here to reimagine the stories we tell about who qualifies as an innovator and provide some practical tools to help anyone discover their identity as an innovator. This episode is one of our deep dives into the disruptor style. So what is so special about the disruptor style? As a disruptor, you understand the most complex ideas and concepts. At your core, just like me, you are an architect of new systems. Your tools of trade are models and frameworks that help other people shift how they see themselves and experience the world. Now, disruptors are visionaries, they're visionary thinkers that push us to reimagine the principles and the values and the ideals upon which we build our social infrastructure, our culture, and our communities. Now, disruptors always create with the end vision in mind, then they architect a path to see it come to pass. They naturally see the world through the lens of pure potential. They are, in some sense, Visionary thinkers who naturally move by faith, not facts. Disruptors make it their business to dismantle, disrupt, and displace old systems. They innovate by designing ecosystem-like solutions which reflect a deep understanding of the interdependence and complexity of various elements and symptoms of the problem at hand. Due to their knack for designing and navigating and thinking in kind of these big systems, disruptors are rather unconventional. Yet when put to the test, their innovations typically yield much better outcomes than the status quo. So what is it that disruptors focus on? Systems, hands down. And systems are a set of interconnected and interdependent components that collectively create a unified whole. From a disruptor perspective, there's a real benefit to focusing your innovative energy and activity on systems. Why? Because you can actually affect change. Now, systems exist all around us, including social, economic, environmental, and organizational systems. Just like the blockbuster film, The Matrix, we often uphold and exist and operate within systems unknowingly. Systems can change when, at the minimum, two specific actions occur. One is when more, one or more aspect of a system is kind of redesigned. You just kind of reimagine the system or when a solution or a strategy addresses the root cause of a problem that you seek to solve. Ultimately, the goal of this work, the goal of Disruptor's work, is to create better, more functional and sustainable outcomes. So why is it that we need Disruptors? Well, Disruptors are here to create new ways of being and doing. They essentially are the innovation archetype that remove barriers to creation. If you think back to one of the prior episodes when I talked about innovation existing along a spectrum of three different stages, from potential to purpose 
and process. We started off with the first stage of potential, which was creativity, the ability to just think of new ideas, whereas innovation is actually the process. Between idea and implementation, there are often barriers. Disruptors are really adept at removing the barriers to creating and actually doing. What are a disruptor's superpowers? Well, disruptor's superpowers are really the ability to change how we see social, physical, and cultural systems. They are able to create things that kind of put a wool over our eyes and or a new set of glasses, if you will, and completely change how we see something. When I think about disruptors, I often think about a toy that I used to have as a kid called a kaleidoscope. I don't necessarily know if they're around too much these days, but you would look in the viewfinder and as soon as you would turn the dial, what you saw would change automatically. That's the best example of a disruptor that I can think about because what they create shifts your perspective. Now, Disruptor's secret weapon, in my opinion, is technology. Why? Because technology is an exponential force multiplier that inherently operates at scale. If you think about it, there's a lot of conversation going on about the power of artificial intelligence and how it's able to completely change how fast, how big, and how impactful any particular thing could be. Technology is a platform at scale. And when we think about disruptors focus on systems, that's exactly why technology is really a secret weapon that they can use to impact change at a broad scale. Like every innovation type, disruptors do have room for growth. Disruptors actually have a tendency to suffer from idealism. And I am the first to say that I often see the world as it can be, but not always as it is. This often presents as miscalculating the gap between the present as it is and the future that they can easily envision. They might overestimate the amount of work needed to effectuate a change and may easily, unconsciously often, dismiss relevant details that do not seem to fit the puzzle that they have in front of them. Now, if you work with a disruptor on your team, it's helpful to know what's the most supportive environment for disruptors. Now, disruptors thrive when they're provided with the freedom and the space to imagine without limitation or restriction. So I encourage you, if you work with disruptors, communicate to them the ultimate vision, then put few, if any at all, limitations on the process that they can implement to achieve a desired outcome. This will ensure that they have the space and the freedom to do what they do best. Imagine the impossible and do the unthinkable. I'm an innovator, but if I'm being honest with you, I couldn't always call myself an innovator. I've spent the better part of a decade launching and leading projects designed to help everyday people access their innovation potential. It's included projects that have unlocked over $75 million for things that bridge gaps in access, opportunity, and equity. When I transitioned from being a trial attorney to leading organizations in the innovation space, what I really needed was a guide to help me answer two critical questions. Am I an innovator? And what type of innovator am I? The problem is that our society and our own identity serve as barriers to keep our powerful potential as innovators locked away and hidden. Innovation Currency is the book that is designed to help you discover your hidden innovator. If you've ever wondered what innovation looks like for you, how you might use innovation in your day-to-day -day life, or how you can use innovation to help solve some of the most pressing challenges in the world, or even your workplace or community, then please grab your copy of Innovation Currency because I can assure you that after reading it, you'll have the tools, the experience, and the translatable skills to unlock your hidden innovator.
To find out where you can purchase your copy in whatever format makes sense for you, scroll down to the show notes for the appropriate links. Now, oftentimes when I describe to people the different archetypes and their superpowers and what they focus on and what makes a particular innovation style great, it's often this theoretical concept. So what I want to do is actually give you an example of the disruptor style and practice from my own experience. I'm actually the founder of a nonprofit called the NIA Project, which is an organization that's designed to clear the pathway to college for underrepresented students. In the United States alone, 3 million students actually graduate from high school every year, yet 40% of those from underrepresented backgrounds never make it to college. And when I started the NIA Project, it was really to close that gap. And we did so in a very different way. We understand that there are practical and systemic barriers to the college admissions or the college access process. And we knew we could not completely break the system and start it from scratch. So what makes the project very unique, and in fact, I would say pretty disruptive, is that instead of removing the barriers, we like kids, and those that are supporting them essentially get a cheat sheet on how to fast track their way into college and to win scholarships. The way it actually started was I had a project for a leadership program that I had to create something impactful in my community. And for a long time, a family friend had been taking students from his university in San Diego to a school that he had built in um, Akachi, Ghana in West Africa. And you can see what I'm wearing is representative of my time spent there. And the only students that I saw were students that did not look like the black and the brown and the indigenous kids that I, at the time, was coaching and teaching how to write their resumes and how to think through really important skills that would be necessary for their professional careers. And someone said to me, why would you take kids from Overtown to Africa. Now, what you may not know about Overtown is it is a community in Miami, Florida that used to be the thriving economic center of the black community until the 95 interstate system cordoned the community and really quartered it off and left it with severe poverty, economic depression, and some violence. I think there's so much special things about uh, of the Overtown community, but the students there often lacked the opportunity to really get to college and have amazing experiences. So Neo Project started with me taking students from Overtown to Africa. The idea was the most highly selective institutions in the United States find competitive students who have these types of leadership and extracurricular activities that make their college essays interesting. So what I thought would be great was to teach students not only how to navigate the barriers to college, how to write a great essay, but ultimately to give them a transformative experience that would make them stand out on the college admissions application. Well, fast forward, NIA Project has expanded to, into an organization over the last 10 years that has helped unlock over $26 million in scholarships for students with a 100% college admissions rate and a 98% scholarship scholarship acquisition rate for our fellows. And more importantly, what we realized, thinking about the role that technology could play in the disruptive nature of our work, was we actually expanded substantially by taking all of the college coaching methodology, how to write a resume, how to do a personal statement, how to navigate an interview, how to think about the actual financial aid process, how to negotiate scholarships, how to get the right mindset, and put that into an on-demand technology platform called Access Online. It's kind of like Khan Academy for college strategy. In a short period of time, within almost two and a half years of launching, we've seen over 55,000 enrollments in the content and saw a 560% increase in the number of students served. And what's exciting about NIA Project as an organization and how that model has really evolved is to me, it reflects really what the heart of the disruptor innovation style really means. We were able to reimagine a different pathway through an existing system of how a student gets from high school to college to increase 
the enrollment rate from what was a 40% drop off to 100%. We're able to exponentially increase the number of students served by leveraging technology, the secret weapon, if you will, of the disruptor style, and see incredible outcomes of $26 million in scholarships won. Now the big vision for that work is to unlock a billion dollars in scholarships and help well over 100,000 students across the US. But that's just an example from my own life of how the disruptor innovation style can be put into practice. Now, how do you think you can put your innovation style into practice? I want you to take a pen or paper or your favorite note-taking app on your tablet, computer, or phone, whatever technology medium that makes the most sense to you. And I want you to try to put into practice responses to the following questions. What is an example of your primary innovation style in practice that you've encountered either directly or observed in the news media? So if you're a disruptor style, what's an example of this style in practice? How does this example align with the description of the style that I've just given you. Is it the same? Is it different? Now, I want you to think about an example from your own life of your primary innovator style in practice. Now, in this case, we're talking about disruptors. So as a disruptor, what's an example from your own life of that disruptor energy in action? And as you think about your disruptor innovator style, what is a specific issue or system that you want to change? Why? Why does it even matter? How is your approach new or different from existing solutions that you can see? And what is your vision for a new future or a different outcome? These questions, First, you know, what's an example of the disruptor style in practice that you've encountered in your research or the news media? Second, how does this, does this example align with my description of what disruptors are like? Third, what is an example of the disruptor style in your own life and how does it look like in practice? And fourth, as you think about your style, what is a specific system or issue you want to change? Why? What is your approach and how is it different from existing solutions? And finally, what is your vision for a new future or outcome? I'd love to hear from you as you begin to examine your disruptor style and what it looks like in practice and take some time to really try it out. If this episode resonated with you, then I hope that you will comment, review, like, or share on your favorite podcast platform. And I look forward to diving into more innovation currency styles in future episodes. Thank you so much.